Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the Kugo S1 electric scooter. This scooter was provided to me by geekbuying.com but that does not mean this video is sponsored or influenced in any sort of way. However, I will put a link to their website below because they did send me this unit for review. So massive thanks to geekbuying.com. First up, um, the Kugo electric scooter is available in a few different varieties. I have the normal S1, not the Pro. Uh, it comes with what they claim is 30 km an hour top speed, 30 km range, and you can ride it up to 120 kilograms. It should be able to go up a 15% incline, and overall it should just apparently be the most awesome scooter ever. However, on closer inspection, uh, what I really notice, and this is of course in line with what I said about the Xiaomi scooter, is there is just no integration whatsoever. This does not look like a very refined product. It's more like a scooter with a motor and a battery. It's not a super integrated finished looking product and it's definitely not going to win a design award. So while it doesn't have looks going for it, what it does have going for it is puncture proof tires front and rear. Um, they also claim an anti-skid rear tire. However, there's no brake on there. So unless you push on the fender really hard, it's not going to skid. Um, it has regenerative braking, so that should help with range. However, me doing test rides and carrying my camera backpack with me to film about this scooter, um, that is a combined weight of about 100 kilograms, and I wasn't able to get more than 20 kilo kilometers of range out of it with a total weight of 100 kilograms. Now, obviously, if you weigh like 50, 60, you will get that 30 kilometers easily, but I was not able to get that, so keep that in mind. Now, something I read a lot of in the Xiaomi video is people were upset that there was no suspension. This one has front suspension and rear suspension, quite a lot of travel as well, and it does make for a very comfortable ride. Small nuance though, um, because I usually ride rear with my most of my weight on my rear foot because I don't use this brake, um, I was compressing the rear suspension more than the front suspension, and that was then increasing the head angle a bit. So it felt a little bit weird. However, it doesn't make the scooter really stable when you go through bumps and it's definitely super comfortable to ride. What it lacks is finish. So moving to, for example, not riding it, but just opening it up and closing it again. Unlike nicer looking scooters, this one uses a very standard um, scooter locking thing. So you really have to push the front wheel or the handlebars forwards, then you have to push this thingy down, and then you have to work some magic to fold it up and fold it down again. Another problem, I think, is the grips. They do fold, which is great for making everything small and compact, but it's so poorly finished. Um, also, the height adjust, you have two levels of height adjust. Um, but just the quick release, it's just plasticky. It doesn't feel high quality whatsoever. And you can really see that also on the finish. It's just normal bolts and washers. And to be honest, I loved the Xiaomi M365 because it was a really nice finished product. This is something that I'd say a few people could do in a week's time if they wanted to. It's not like a big company finished product. And that really shows in the display area. There is a display on there, it can show you your battery, but for example, it gives you voltage and amperage, but not wattage or percentage of battery left over. It does do a few really cool things like showing you how far you've already ridden it in the lifetime of the scooter or since you last turned it on. That's really awesome. There's a little horn on there, which sounds ridiculous. There's lights front and rear. That's all really cool. Um, so functionally speaking, it works. It's a great scooter. It's stiff and it rides well and it does all of that, but it just misses that little bit of finesse that I would really like from a product that I'm going to use to drive to my colleagues that will all look at me weirdly because I'm already a grown up riding an electric scooter. Now that does not mean that I'm hating on this product. I think Kugo did something really cool here for the price of this thing. And again, performance is definitely there, comfort is there, but it's something that I would personally use more to get to the shops or just to move around in the city or to commute to work. But it's not something that, as I showed in the other video, that I would use for jumping out of a car and getting on this thing and then jumping on a train and folding it up and you know unfolding, folding all the time because it really does take a while. And it's not something that I would probably 
one to be seen on because it's just it's not a very nicely finished product so then to conclude this video should you spend your hard-earned money on this thing well it depends so don't buy it if you are a fashionable person constantly hopping in and out of trains with the scooter definitely don't get it because it's just not a very elegant mechanism to fold it and unfold it it just takes too long in my opinion however if you just want to drive through the city hop to the shops you know do all that sort of stuff do your groceries visit some friends go to work um, in a single trip then yeah it doesn't cost very much and it's got a decent range definitely a very small charger as well that helps and it's very powerful so there you go guys hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one